This entitled mum has travelled all the way to Singapore on holiday, but she expects everyone around her to accommodate her Western lifestyle. So she's about to get the shock of her life when this restaurant doesn't have any forks. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. Some context. I live in Germany, folks, and I work at the Public Health Administration. It's basically the German pendant to the CDC, although organized differently. On that particular day, only a co-worker and me were left in the office in the late afternoon, and a family of four who all tested positive came in. So my co-worker took care of it. To explain my work on that special afternoon, this is what usually happens behind the scenes in Germany, and happened on that day too. If you were showing symptoms like coughing, headaches or sore throat, you naturally go to a doctor. The doctor then runs a test, real-time PCR for those interested, to determine if you have the spiky virus or not, since you literally cannot distinguish the virus and a bad flu from symptoms alone. Trust me, we've had enough troubles in the past with doctors who thought they could. In Germany, we have a special category of illness called diseases with the duty to report. And when a doctor does a test for them, because they suspect someone may have it, they have to report it to us on a form. And guess which disease has been added to this list just this year? Everyone's favorite pandemic causer and holiday ruiner. Hence we get about 20 form sheets of that kind in every day. In most cases, they turn out to be negative, but the times they don't matter. In any case, sometimes doctors write an extremely detailed report of the patient's health on the form sheet. But on that fateful day, they literally wrote the patient contact details and virus underneath. That's it. So I had to ring every patient and ask them what in the world was going on for them to get a test. One detail I should mention is that if you call us, you get left in a waiting loop and have to listen to some pretty peculiar music. I've heard it described as cheap techno, awful rock, and my personal favorite, obnoxious sci-fi music. Trust me, it sounds like Herbie Hancock overdosed and decided to compose something on GarageBand only using his right earbrow, all while hanging upside down from the ceiling. The Encounter when I get to my second to last sheet, I notice that I have a father and his daughter both in front of me. Great, less work for me. Or so I naively thought. So I call the number and wait for them to answer. I only spoke to EF, so no necessity for a detailed cast. Telephone. Doot doot doot. EF. Schmidt. Name redacted and it's pretty common to answer the phone like this in Germany. This is me speaking. Ah, uh, finally it's you, that took forever. I have no idea what he's talking about, so I just continue my usual protocol. I'm calling you because you took a test for the virus today. May I ask you why? EF in a ranting voice. No, I did not. I took it yesterday because my daughter has a sore throat and a dry cough. And I tested too because I might have got it from her. I'm glad that you're calling since we're under immense stress and need to be released from quarantine immediately. Do you have the test results in yet? <laughs> Excuse me? I thought you were calling me to tell me that you have them. This is absurd. Why is it taking so long to get these results? This is a good time to mention that tests for the look like flu but is almost six times as contagious virus usually takes about one to two days to be processed and sent to us. And EF had chosen the worst possible setup to get tested. It was already Friday and labs don't work on the weekend. The clinic he opted to get tested at was absolutely crowded and he did not leave any information behind to quickly get results. So naturally, we would get his results on Monday or Tuesday. Sometimes doctors call their patients first to notify them of their test results. However, we haven't got any results from the lab so far. This is ridiculous. I have to work every day. It is urgent that I can get back as fast as possible to working. In a comical twist, he felt that it was so important to tell me that he had to work, he neglected to tell me where he worked. And my daughter writes three exams next week. Will she miss them? Will she? Sir, I can only speak from statistics and given by them, you will get the test results by Tuesday. This is too late and I interrupt him because I know what would follow and I know our antidote against it. If you need documentation that you are currently in quarantine, then I can fill out a form and send it to you at the end of quarantine. Quarantine? Indeed, since your test is still being processed, I have to formally put you and your daughter under quarantine. You are ordered not to leave the house at any time. 
and to separate from each other and the rest of the family. Avoid contact and if absolutely necessary, only speak with masks on and at least three meters, if not five distance. This sounds like EF is taking a lot of crap from some 19 year old dude who has no experience in the medical field whatsoever. But the style of talking is quite usual for German. Quarantine? And for how long should we sit here while we miss one appointment after another? Until we have the test results in. Then I or a coworker will call you to officially release you from quarantine. If your doctor gets to you first and your test result turns out to be positive, please call immediately. Now that you mention it, I have called today and hung in the waiting loop for 45 minutes while having to listen to this awful techno mix that you have going on and no one would pick up. That was because we had five positive cases in our county that morning. Two turned out to be false positive. I'm an important person. He still neglected to tell me why. And need to be at work ASAP. I listened to his rant a bit and then interrupt him because we are told not to discuss crap with people. My coworker once said, we are not the secretaries of Mr. Spahn, the German health minister. We don't make or influence decisions on the virus regulations. Do you have any other questions? Yes, what happens if we test positive? Does that shenanigans with being quarantined for 14 days happen? We will miss so many appointments, meetings. My daughter will miss her exams and we'll have to retake them and we'll have so much homework and classwork piled up. I Exactly. What you have described will exactly happen. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to hear that. Apparently he found my blunt sarcasm so funny that he decided to drop his attitude, which I was surprised by, since usually no one thinks I'm funny, which I try to deny. Do you have any questions regarding the test or quarantine? No, thank you for your call. Get well soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hung up and went over to my coworker who was stressed out of his tight shirt because the positive family was causing him headaches. I tell the story of the encounter, we both laugh, and I go register EF in our system. Okay, the real crime here is the horrible hold music. I swear so many companies and organizations put the most horrible music at the loudest possible volume so it gets all distorted and really grates on your ears. I swear it's just to make you want to hang up. It's almost like a tolerance test, like, oh, how long can you bear being on hold? Because I suppose the more people who hang up, the less people they have to talk to. If you're someone who's a decision maker on the hold music that goes on the phones, let me know in the comments below if this is true or just a coincidence. I don't think the EF's frustration is completely unreasonable here. They don't know if he's tested positive or not, and so it would be frustrating to be quarantined when you're like, well, I might not actually be contagious. The problem is that resources are limited, so unless they know that you aren't positive, there's still a chance that you could be. Yes, it sucks, and there should be more resources so that people shouldn't be unfairly held up from doing their normal lives. But these are the conditions people live with in times of uncertainty. They want to take the safest and most cautious action possible. The backstory. I live in a Southeast Asian country called Singapore, which happens to be a rather popular tourist destination because of British colonization and trade routes and whatnot. So every time it is summer break in Europe, America, there is a huge influx of tourists from the region. My friend, not going to say his name, works in a Chinese restaurant in Singapore's most prominent tourist area, Orchard Road. Singapore is mostly Chinese, so of course Chinese restaurants would be super popular in the country. And EM made it a point to visit the restaurant my friend was working in. In the cast, F my friend, EM, the star of the story, EK, EM's eight year old, DH, EM's decent husband, CW, F's co-worker, CS, another one of F's co-workers, but he only knows Chinese. LF, a large family that reserved EM's table. The encounter. EM barges into the store and immediately plops herself down on the huge circular 12-seater table towards the right of the restaurant. Coworker, rather exasperated. Excuse me, madam, but you cannot sit at this table as it is reserved for... Yeah, can I have a menu, please? Madam, you can't sit here. Uh, no, can you give me a menu, not a table? This exchange continues for a while before CW gives up and gives them a menu. 
A few minutes later, the family calls F, the waiter on duty. She then proceeds to butcher the pronunciation of every item she orders, causing even more delays. While the chefs try to figure out what the family wanted, EM calls F again. When is my food gonna be ready? Ma'am, we're cooking your food right now, and it's all- Mom, I'm hungry. See, he's hungry. Where's our food? Now, honey. Okay, okay, I'll tell the chefs to hurry up. Finally, their food comes. This would usually be when this ends, but EM kept harassing my friend further. Hey, hey you! How are we supposed to eat? Sorry? Don't you sorry me! Give me my utensils! EK then proceeds to try and pick up his noodles with his hands and put them in his mouth, but gets scolded. Mom, I can't eat this! Friend taking EM's chopsticks. Madam, you're supposed to eat these with chopsticks and... Takes EM's spoon this soup spoon to eat, DH fumbling with his utensils. See, I told you you were doing it wrong. EM and DH start arguing, drawing stares from everyone else in the restaurant. Look, I don't care. Just give us forks and spoons. We don't have for- Give us the utensils. F shouting towards CS. Hey, can you check if we have the Western utensils? CS shouting back. We don't. EM basically throwing a tantrum at this point. Don't you freaking crap talk me. Where's your freaking manager? This is unacceptable. EK somewhat embarrassed. Mom? Shut up, EK. And you, points toward DH. This is your fault, you jerk. I didn't want to come to this restaurant full of racist craps, but you forced me anyway. DH makes some confused stuttering. At this point, everyone had stopped eating and the entire restaurant had their eyes fixed on EM's table. And as if to make this worse, the family that originally reserved the 12-seater table came into the restaurant. The large family to CW. Hey, I thought you said that this was our table. I just wanted to have dinner and here you all are, screwing it all up. According to my friend, this was when him, CW, and several members of the cooking staff had to actually carry EM out of the store while she kicked and screamed slurs at them. The branch manager or someone ended up giving most of the staff a day off and most of those staff members took said day off the very next day. DH ended up apologizing to LF and from what my friend heard actually gave them $100 on his way out. You would think that if you travel to a foreign country you might expect some, I don't know, foreign culture, perhaps what you're eating and the way you eat it. Usually people travel to embrace that sort of thing. Why would you travel all the way across the world only to have things exactly how you normally have them in your hometown? And she's blaming everyone else like it's somehow their fault. I'm sure that there are restaurants there that are designed to accommodate tourists, so if you really desperately need those utensils, I'm sure you could find the right ones. But don't blame the other restaurants that are just doing things like they normally do. First, let's add some context. I live in a small city in Romania, nowadays the center of the virus epidemic in Europe. Because of that, everyone needs masks and usually gloves when they go somewhere. This story took place a few days ago. It is a funny story and every time I tell it, people seem to enjoy it. The story. On a Monday, I wake up with a call from my grandma asking me to go to the family doctor to get some tickets for her and my grandpa to get them some meds. I take a shower, I take my mask and I was ready to go. I reached the clinic and went inside. The hallway was empty which was quite strange. Usually it's quite full and you have to make an appointment to enter. I knock on the door and enter the nurse's cabinet. The doctor's cabinet is actually made up of two cabinets, connected by a door. You can't enter in the doctor's cabinet without going through the nurse's cabinet. She was expecting me. I gave to the nurse my grandparents' medical cards so she can make their tickets. I waited an hour and the nurse tells me to go the next day to take the cards and the tickets because the database was busy at the moment. The next day I am called by my family doctor to go get the cards. I went there and as I expected, the hallway was full. As I was going to the door, passing by the seats, I see many people giving me weird looks. Some normal and peaceful, and others angry and quite stressed out. Next to the door was seated a woman who looked about 40 to 50 years old, giving me dirty looks. As I'm reaching the doorknob, I hear, Excuse me, I was the one in line, young man. Oh, it's alright, I'm just going inside to get some tickets and I'll be gone in less than a minute. No, no, I was in line. You have to wait here like all of us. 
Well, I waited here yesterday and the nurse told me to come today. She just called me 10 minutes ago. All right, fine. But you should know that an old woman is being consulted right now. I told myself, well, if it's an old woman inside and she is naked, I shouldn't barge in. I go in the back of the hallway and stay on foot because all the seats are occupied. After two minutes, to everyone's surprise, an old woman gets out from the cabinet. I try to go and reach for the door when I see Karen rising from her seat and rushing to the door. She turned a bit around and gave me a Grinch smile, probably thinking, King, he he, I outsmarted you. But our entitled female dog forgot to close the door and it remained half open. The nurse gets out of the doc's cabinet and sees Karen sitting on the chair next to her desk. Normally you can't enter inside until you're called by the nurse. We could hear everything well from outside. Finally, I thought no one will come to help me. Who are you ma'am? Why are you here? I'm here to transfer my medical file to your clinic. I also need to get a letter to make some blood analysis. Ma'am, you can't barge in here like it's your house. You have to make an appointment. The nurse gets out on the hallway and sees me at the end of the hallway, pretty annoyed. Hi, you here for the tickets, right? Come. When Karen sees me at the door, she turns red. What are you doing? How are you allowing other patients to get inside nowadays? Don't you know there is a pandemic going on? Ma'am, you have no business here. If you want to transfer your file, you'll have to wait until the appointments for the day end. Or you can make an appointment for tomorrow. How dare you disrespect me like this? I'll make sure you lose your license. Her next words, I think, are the definition of cringe and entitlement. You should respect elders in this period. Yeah, this period. After this pandemic is over, we can start making fun of elders, everyone. I heard giggles from the hallway. He, showing towards me, has an unfinished appointment. He came now to finish it. So again, I ask you to leave. Mr. Doctor, Mr. Doctor. The door from the doctor's cabinet opens and Mrs. Doctor exits the door. Scared and confused because this idiot was screaming. I don't know, but when Karen saw that the doctor was a lady, I think I never saw such a fast transition from red to white in my life. What's going on? Who is screaming? Karen started to think the doctor was on her side. Your nurse has been very disrespectful towards me and even let another person inside during this pandemic. I believe- Who are you? I don't recognize you. Do you have an appointment? The nurse goes into the doctor's cabinet to bring my tickets and to bring the sign book to mark my appointment. Well, no, but I waited in line. I need to transfer my file and get a letter, but the nurse let him in and- I sign myself and leave. Listen, you've no right to be here. This young gentleman, I felt flattered, needed to come now to finish his appointment from yesterday, so now leave. I exit the door and Karen follows. The nurse calls the next patient inside. I'm going to the end of the hallway when I hear Karen. You there, stand still. I turn around to see a Karen and her red face, fuming with anger. What's wrong? Why did you enter the cabinet while I was there? Well, the nurse called me. I told you it takes less than a minute. Why did you listen to her? I wanted to facepalm myself when I heard it. Giggles from the witnesses again. I thought at this point it is pointless to fight her. I hope you're happy. Now I have to wait to this line again. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Well, I'm sorry for those waiting. Laughs and giggles from the crowd. And why haven't you said anything while in there? I thought I should respect the elders during this period. I turn around and went to the door. I'm not done with you. I opened the hallway door and right in front of it was the guard from the permanent cab at the first floor. What's going on? Is there a problem here? Yes, this lady has emotional problems. The guard starts to argue with Karen, but I heard none of it. I straight up left. When I reach the first floor exit, I hear behind me, You pig, let go of me! I can walk for myself! You don't have the right to touch me! I ended up eventually holding the door for the person who made my day 100% more hilarious and fun. I wish her a nice day as she stormed off. I know that for some people, Karens might get frustrating and annoying, but for me, this experience made my day. This one's a little confusing because why was she still waiting there? Did she just rock up, didn't tell the reception, and then just thought she was going to be next in line? Because surely the reception would have told her, no, we can't do that right now, we're seeing patients. We'll do the administrative stuff at the end of the day. I mean, she must have thought that because even when they flat out told her, no, we can't do that until later, she still somehow thought she has to line up again and then she'll be seen. So even if she didn't get kicked out, of there she would have lined up waited for probably what half an hour an 
hour, only to be told, look, we already told you, we're not gonna deal with that till the end of the day. The best thing with an entitled person like this is when they think they've outsmarted someone, only to be met seconds later with a defeat. Because for some reason, their whole world revolves around little things like being first in line, or making sure other people don't get the thing that they wanted. They must live very petty lives. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.